Welcome to the eighth edition of our podcast, joined by my co-host, Derek Williams. He's from the future, back here <laughs> to give us the answers. Um, <laughs> today we're doing a new format, and we're just covering one topic. So we're going to break down everything we know about hip flexors in terms of measurable numbers. Let's start with what we're referring to when we talk about hip flexors. So let's lift the knee up. So if you're standing or sitting, lift the knee up and just hold your knee and just keep holding it there. And eventually you're going to start feel it burning. Don't put it down until you feel it burning. Yeah. So why are the hip flexors a modern human deficiency? Because with the ATG program, we're not trying to do stuff just to do it. We're trying to fix real problems that come about. So number one is when we go into the gym and we do squats, deadlifts, leg presses, leg extensions, all these things, we're training our legs, but then all that is measurable. We know how strong we are. You feel something working in there? All right, so you should know what your hip flexor is by now. If not, Google Images will tell yeah, you. Yeah, get it a little higher if you don't. Yeah. So, yeah. so squat, deadlift, leg extension, leg press, hamstring curls. You know how much weight you're doing. But in my entire life, I was never given a measurable exercise for the opposite of that. The muscles that pick up the leg, the reverse of a squat. So we'll, we'll dive into all those details. But... This is the why behind it. And then on top of that, we spend so much time sitting. So not only are these muscles too weak, they're also too tight. Mm. So if you now think about stretching your leg behind you to where you feel those muscles stretch, that's the length of the hip flexor. So yeah. most of us have shortened and weak hip flexors. So we're kind of getting into the history behind it. I know you had injections in your hips to get through college basketball. What was that like? Yeah, uh, and this is one thing I didn't even know about till my late thirties, early forties. I didn't realize how important it was to have strong hip flexors and how my hip flexors were uh, responsible for for me running, me jumping, me walking. You know, um, so I was playing college basketball um, like like you said over twenty, almost twenty five years ago now. Wow! And uh, yeah, and and. My hips, I did, I did so much squatting, so much leg press, so much uh, plyometrics, so much of just just powerful lifts, uh, Olympic lifts. And then my hips just kind of got out of alignment, out of balance. And then to get through playing my sport, my I think my junior and senior year, I had to, before each game, I had to go get cortisone injections right in my hips so I wouldn't feel pain Jeez. through that game. It was just like excruciating pain. So in order to play my games, they needed me. I was a starting guard. So Jeez. So I, I just had to do what I had to do, you know? So, um, so yeah, man, this topic is very, very uh, close to home for me and very important, man. So I feel like, uh, but yeah. So you were doing, even in college, you were doing measurable stuff for the exact things where we need this force. So you're doing measurable stuff for putting force into the ground, yeah. but not for picking those legs back up and not for how much they can stretch how much they can lengthen. So yeah. that's the, that's all we're covering in that's terms so of the numbers in this podcast is the hip flexors, measurable length and strength of those hip flexors. So yeah. for me, you, well, I was always super <laughs> slow growing up. I was told yeah. I couldn't even play college basketball because I was too slow. And I, had, I ran a six second 40 yard dash in high school, broke the team record slowest <laughs> 40 ever. The coach made me run it again. Then he made me take my shoes off to prove that I didn't have lead weights in them. Wow. Like just to he kind was of trying a, to be joke yeah. for every team. So, he was the, the laughing, the running yeah. joke. Um, and fortunately, Drew got some footage of me in high school. So he can show you. a. I have a wide open fast break. And you can see everyone on the other team just catch up and steal the ball. So He's basketball was not very fun. Not only when basketball equals knee pain, but also basketball equals being slower than everyone else on the court. That's It's so frustrating and so nerve-wracking to play. I actually... That season, I was puking before every game. He, uh, Drew even got on film mid-game one time. I was so nervous I had to puke. I ran out to the hallway to puke. I, like, I left the court in the middle of a game. I've never wow. seen that happen. I've never seen the, the announcer be like, all right, Patrick's out of the game to go puke in the hallway because he's so nervous because he's slower than everyone on the court and his knees are killing him. So speed is something I knew I didn't have. Then I would encourage everyone to look up on Google Charles Poliquin Structural Balance. Charles Poliquin was the first person really obsessed with measurable ratios and numbers. And he did this calculated off a of bench press. Mm. So at the time, I also had really bad shoulders because I was trying to get stronger. I was benching all the time. Yeah. And on his test, I, I knew how much I could max bench. And then I tested how much I could do in the opposite of that, an external rotation exercise, which is basically 
checking the exact opposite of your bench press strength. Mm -hmm. And he said, you should be able to do eight reps with at least like 10% of your, of your bench press. Yeah. And I was nowhere near that. But then I put in the work over time, got to where I could do that. Shoulder pain was gone. Mm. So I became hooked on this concept of measurement. If mm. I want to improve something, I need to be able to measure it. So mm. I started applying that to my jumping, started jumping higher, but I was still kind of slow compared to my jumping. So when I saw a fact about sprinters having proportionally larger hip flexors than mm. regular humans and that being the number one difference so like what muscle size difference if you see someone walking on the street and then you take an olympic sprinter and you measure all their muscles what's the biggest difference is it the bicep is it the glutes is it the quads there's a lot of differences the biggest difference was the size of the hip flexors mm. so when i saw that and i was already obsessed with that this idea of getting measurable numbers we started testing 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 so derek and i were already in the gym training people by the time we came up with our first number for the hip flexors, which is what? 50% of your body weight for 20 reps. Yep. You know, uh, we got to our three sets of 20 with half our body weight was really easy. Yeah. Now, if you're looking on the screen or you can go to reverse squat.com. Yeah. Reverse squat so kind of explain what this is and what we're talking about here. And Drew will put the so, visual so on the screen. Our first, me and Ben, like, um, like you said, we've been going at this for a long time. We've been training athletes for a long time, uh, professional athletes, just athletes of all kinds. And we found that um, athletes that couldn't pull, big, bring their legs up with 50% of their body weight just weren't as fast, just weren't as athletic, just weren't as slow. And, and we saw that the freaky athletic people were able to do that easily and even then some, you know? So... Uh, I created this product, man. It's, it's called it's our, a reverse strap. Um, so this is this is what you do with a lay, low cable pull in on a cable machine, um, and 20, 20 reps, half your body weight is, is are measurable, and to have just the baseline of athleticism. If you want to be faster, if you want to uh, run faster, jump higher, and just be more athletic, and just feel good, and just reverse the effects of just that sedentary lifestyle, uh, this product was created. Uh, so yeah, low cable pull in. 50% of your body weight. So me and Ben around, he's sitting between one, 175 to 185. So that's yeah, not that's we'll 90 pounds for us. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, we're going to kind of take it one step at a time. Okay. So we worked that for a while to where, 50, to where half our body weight for 20 reps. And we used to call it a low cable pull-in because that's how you set it up and stuff, but that didn't <laughs> catch on. So we had to reverse explain squat. reverse squat. So kind of, you kind of understand like, oh, I get it. Like I train like when I do squat type exercises, I know how much weight I'm lifting. Mm. You wouldn't expect to become a world-class power lifter if you only did some banded chest press. And then you wonder why you don't bench 405. Mm. Mm. So that's where the measurements come in because we train this hard. So when yeah. people come in here who are slow, it's, we give them a gift because we point out you're weak as heck. Now this is just one measurable out of probably 20 different measurables. But the point is that it's a gift when you find out you can do something about your speed. Yeah. So I am hooked now but then boom covid hits no gyms no cable every gym has cable machines yeah. but all of a sudden no one has gyms yeah so both you and i also worked on being able to do an l sit for 20 seconds yeah so why don't you kind of describe the l sit and drew can pull up a visual of the l sit yeah so i mean there's different ways to, to work to on build, that right to, now. to build your, your maybe uh, describe that like your hip so, flexor. so, so if someone's so, listening right now kind of describe what to do so l sit l sit is where you sit in uh, there's different ways to do it. I would I would say sit, start with some high bars where you extend your, your knees, just keeping your knees in, starting off. And once you get good at that for 20 seconds, extend one leg out at a time. Mm. And then once you get good at that, the key to the, the, what me and Ben are talking about is being able to extend both legs out on the ground yep. for 20 seconds. So that 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 is the measurable for speed and athleticism for L said. So basically on your ground, hopefully Drew's pulling it up. But um, but yeah, on the ground, sending your legs straight out, holding your legs straight out for 20 seconds. That's a lot of low abs. That's a lot of hip flexors. So that's a really key movement for for your hip flexors. Yeah. And that, you can start that right now in your dorm room, in your in your apartment. So so yeah. That's another good way to understand it, which is so like in Derek and I's experience, let's say an NFL middle linebacker came here. Yeah. Middle linebacker. So that's someone who's strong and does have to run there's no way they're doing a 20 second L sit no. because their leg is so muscular. So the idea is that being able to do an L sit is not what makes you run fast. Having the muscles to be able to run fast, having hamstrings and these and glutes and these kind of muscles 
and then being able to also pick up your own muscular legs. So if yeah. we had a cornerback or wide receiver, they would have more of a chance of doing it yeah. on average. But this is how we give people an advantage is by the middle linebacker getting where he can do this stuff or by the cornerback or receiver getting exceptional at this stuff. So yeah. do you find do you find that? I don't like Elsit though, huh? but we'll but I do, didn't do you forget you, that. No. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it's tough, man. Else it, is, 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 is you don't get motion. So for me, I really like motion. Yeah. So this is what I would say. Like, if you want to do Elsit, do Elsit if you don't have anything else. But yeah. try to figure out somewhere where you can get motion into it. And that's that's the first thing. Like like the reverse squat strap is super cheap and allows you to hook up to a cable machine. Right. So it's not just I take the time and effort to have alternatives to things, but that doesn't mean that's where our results came from. We probably done 90% reverse squats, 10% LSAT. Because it's something we can do. True. True. Do I was gonna ask you, do you find that when you cause you we've been training a lot of athletes, do you find that because you know, I, you know Lance, right? Captain Plant. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a freak. Oh yeah. And, and he couldn't do an L sit, but he and, and 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 he has like he he's great at squats. Do you feel like um it's because it's just under trained muscle, or do you feel like what do you feel like? It's your own ratio. So he's yeah. the most powerful athlete yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. Now he could get to where he can do an L sit. He could get stronger in these things. Yeah. And then he would see like his hundred meter time improve. So gotcha. there's the there's the power into the ground, and then there's how rapidly you can keep spinning your own wheels. Mm. So mm. so the reverse squat uh is our king. It also gets it gets you brick check time. It gets you pretty <laughs> shredded up. <laughs> we uh we keep ourselves motivated in our diet and stuff. So we don't do any like six pack work. Yeah. We do reverse six pet. We train our abs from the ground up. Yeah. So the ab work we do is being able to pick our legs up. That gives us the aesthetic and it makes us gives us a superior advantage to run faster. And also, I think it really helps the knees because when you're so weak in the hip flexor, how are you going to get from point A to point B? Are you going to be clopping around with a bunch of force or are you going to be doing it smoothly and with less you know trauma? So think of that over the course of a game, over the course of a year, the guy with heavy clunking mm -hmm. steps mm -hmm. and you know because we've seen we've had some guys come in who are like let's say big kind of thick basketball players or tight ends and stuff yeah. like that and you just know they're going to be so weak in their hip flexor that's true that's true it's crazy man i uh it helps you i didn't i don't you don't even realize that cause we've been doing it so long how just good you feel like you i don't never have problems I, I remember i used to sit on planes i used to wake up get up with my hips hurt or if i sit down too long i used to hurt or even with the sled and different things just just everyday movement too you just feel so so much better so yeah yeah i just wanted I to kind of say clicking. that so i used to have like clicking in my hip yeah. and i get people asking about that all the time but if you don't have muscle tissue in there how can you expect things to be able to glide right so a lot of times the clicking comes because things can't glide smoothly. Mm. Like you need muscle tissue. If you're gonna yeah. build muscle tissue everywhere else in your body and then leave one place out of balance yeah. and weak, that's where problems come in. The body was that's designed science. correctly. So how have we deviated? That's what the ATG program is. Where have we deviated? Oh, you've done 10,000 squats with measurable weight and you've never done the reverse of a squat with measurable weight. Mm. So, I, so I think we have huge potential. Like I think Derek and I even are still going to get much stronger on our hip flexors than now, yeah. but we'll get to that. So yeah, you level me up. The L sit allows you to do something with nothing. So I would I would still do that, and we're only covering the strength. We're still going to get to the length of it. The monkey foot. You can look up Animal House monkey foot. That allows you to attach a dumbbell to your foot. I worked at about ten percent of body weight, but now it's getting more like I need like twelve point five percent. More experience will tell. Just each leg. Exactly, and then. And Drew will put up visuals of the form on that. And then this is the iron shin. It also clasps on any dumbbell. And this allows you to do tibialis raises too. So the iron shin, I've also found similar thing. Like 10% would be like a baseline that most people actually can't do 20 strict reps. But now I'm needing more like 12.5%. And the there's also an isotib device, which I think might be able to be used for this. But I think the isotib is the best ankle device. And I just gave that <laughs> to a pro athlete who needed it. So I don't oh, have yeah. one here to, oh, wow. to check it out. But they're they're check. restocking me and I'll check that out. Okay, so out those were really cool because you go through COVID, you have L sits, but now you want to be lifting. It gives you something similar to the reverse squat. It's more tedious. You have to do one leg at a time. So it's still really cool. Love it. Yeah. But there's nothing quite like the reverse squat, like how hard you can go at it. You're training both legs. So you're getting you're getting deeper into those lower abs as well. So I yeah. feel like for injury prevention, 
I feel like it's super key. A lot of people struggle with groin injury, hip flexor injury, mm. kind of lower ab strains, different, yeah. even different kind of pubic bone type, um, different hernia stuff. And so I just think we're so weak below our belly button. Like we're all weak and tight below our belly button for modern training, modern life. So, yeah. so true. Bro. So now let's look at where we're at and where we're going with the future of the strength of this. And then we'll finish down by talking about the length with the ATG split squat, couch stretch. Yeah. So um, currently, man, I like it's funny. Yesterday, uh, we were hearing Ben. I'm, I'm looking over here, seeing Ben. He got 130. <laughs> yeah, I weigh like 180. So he's full 130 on the uh, on the low cable. So I was start. I was doing three three sets of 90 pounds um, low cable, mm -hmm. and now 20, uh, rep. 20 reps. 20 reps. Uh, 50 Crushing percent. it. First of my body bite. And I like to try to kind of pull my knees all the way in. So I'm really trying to get my abs in, engaged too. So I'm, I'm trying to get my knees to my shoulders almost every time. And so, uh, and so now um, we had this freaky checklist and I'm gonna try to try to do two thirds my body weight. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start playing around with the 130 pounds since you since you leveling us up over here. But yeah, yeah what so about we, you bro? Well, we've had enough time to establish basic targets and basic targets what that means is those are things that most people can't do that most people could do if they train for it yeah. so half body weight for three sets of 20 the average person actually can get to that now there's a lot of different factors my mom's not going to get to that but she's running well for being 67 and she can do the same exercise and she can just start at 10 pound 30 yeah. pound whatever she wants and get an incredible workout uh this is the whole area we're talking about might be the most important area to train for a woman who's had kids because mm. you lose so much strength in there. Mm. So I'm, I'm even more passionate about this exercise for my wife to be able to rebuild her body after having kids, for my mom to be able to run and play with my kids. Mm. That's what I'm most passionate about it for, but it's also fun as heck to be dangerous as heck on the court. So for me, I've put in the work to now not be slow and be pretty fast and on par with your average NFL defensive back, something like that, not like a world-class speedster, but I'm looking at it going, I'm 30, by the time I'm 35, I want to be one of the fastest 35 year olds in the world. I want to break records at 40 At mm. 50. I want to set the world records for speed, but go, B. this gives me numbers that I can go put in the work and see the reward for what I'm trying to get out of it while still getting stronger in the glutes and hamstrings and everything. We're not talking about leaving a weak link. Mm. And we're also not talking about leaving a tight link. So I'm trying to get to where two thirds, of my body weight, at least three sets of 20, like easy. That's my next that's target. Your goal? That's my next focus. Wow. Yeah. And I like that because it's so measurable. Like you said, you can tell, okay, how many I'm doing, how many did I did 15 today? Did I did 18 today? Mm -hmm. Now, okay, now I did 20. So it is a lot. It's measurable growth for your hip flexors. You know, that's, that's one thing um, that we talked a little bit about that I didn't have growing up, man. I just didn't know my weak links. I didn't know why my hips were hurting. I didn't know why I was had imbalances in my hips. So this is uh, to have a measurable and know exactly um, why and how do I how do I run fast or how to train this is is is, is key. So yeah, that's beautiful. And Derek's so quick on the basketball court at forty three. Yeah, he's the you, toughest bro. forty three year old to guard <laughs> in the world. And part of it is because he's so quick. So everything we're talking about, it makes your own leg feel lighter to pick up. So we're not talking about having a weak leg. We're talking about whatever your existing leg strength is. We're training that it's easier to lift up our own leg. And that's what the, the fastest natural freak athletes have. So even if you match the, the fastest natural athlete at how much force they can put into the ground, they also have super strong muscles to pick back up the leg. Mm. So a lot of athletes wonder why they work so hard in the weight room, but are still slow at top end speed, still lack what the natural athletes have. Now, last parts here is that we're not only talking about strengthening the hip flexor. We know we need that to balance out years of measurable work in the opposite direction. We also need to lengthen out the hip flexor. So I do this with the ATG split squat. I'm one of the, maybe the only person in the world who can throw down a tomahawk dunk and then drop down in a split. So I'm super flexible, but explosive. And that's because with the ATG split squat, I'm actually loading my hip flexors. So mm. it's a strength exercise. And as a simple target, if your toes are on the floor, that means your heel can lift as much as you want because that's a different part of it, which I'll break down. If your toes are on the floor, Drew will pull up visual of this, and the back knee doesn't touch the ground, I can get my front hamstring to cover my calf. This is, again, a basic thing that most people can get to. Mm -hmm. Derek can do it. And now we add weight to it. Yeah. And about 25% of your weight in each hand, so a total of half your body weight, you should be able to do 10 reps on each leg. But that already makes you like 
a superhuman compared to a normal human's knees and hips. Mm -hmm. And then I'm working on the freak number we're seeing, which is more like 80% of your body weight for seven reps. Mm -hmm. And what that means, 80% for seven reps means that you probably could put your own body weight on your back, go into a full squat on one leg with your back leg completely <laughs> outstretched without the knee touching the floor. So if you could do 80% of something for seven reps, you probably could do 100% for one rep. Mm. So those are the current numbers. We train them sensibly. Yeah. The way it's scheduled right now is I in the ATG program, we alternate sessions. So one session, we work on the ATG split squat. That's strengthening your legs and lengthening your hip flexors. And then the next leg session, we work on a squat, but reverse squats. We never do a squat session in the ATG program without reverse squats. These are the kind of rules that you can give that lead you to a better life, a different athletic future. If we're going to squat, then we're going to train the reverse of a squat. If we're going to do a squat and reverse squat session, well, the next leg session, ATG split squat. That is so simple, so simple. but works so well. It has me getting more athletic like every week. So that's my future. I'm so optimistic knowing that I'll be so athletic, so bulletproof compared to what I would be if I didn't have these numbers. So your goal, your goal is to do two thirds of your body weight, reverse squat, three, three sets of 20, three sets of 20, and to have 80% of your body weight, seven, seven reps, reps. With like, with like magical form, making it look like a, a cupcake. <laughs> and so what do you see that translating to your athleticism? It means I can put more force in the ground. Yeah. I can open up even more because I'm flexible and I can pick up my own legs. So speed, jumping, less chance of injury, right. back health. You know, I'm telling you, I got to get you a try. I'm trying to be like Derek. I want to be <laughs> dunking when my kid can dunk. He's can't, can't even walk yet. So I, got, I have to be able to dunk for a very long time. Yeah. So for someone who had never grabbed rim at age 20, I mean, life almost seems unreal that I'll be able to be in my 40s dunking when my kid can dunk, who also won't have the genetics to dunk. But even if he just hops into some workouts with daddy. I'll never tell him to work out ever. Mm. But if he even just sees what I'm doing and wants to like follow my example and do some stuff with me, he'll be able to dunk. Too easy. That's pretty cool. Too easy. Too easy. Do you want him to be a basketball, football? You just don't, don't care. Have... No. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah. But, I'm going to uh, lead by example. Educate and set an example. Those are my two keys in life. That's all. Those are my purposes in life. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. I, um, like I said, I, I, I'm going to continue to, to we training partners. So I'm going to try I can't have you leave me too far in the dust. I um, can't get beat by a 43. How, <laughs> how long, how long, let me ask you this. What I want to ask you when you were talking, how long, cause it I mean, it's a lot of people watching you. That's like, man, I'll never be able to do that. Cause a lot of people, even some people, some grown men are like, man, all I can do is 20 pounds of low cables, man. It's unbelievable that you can do half your body weight. Now you're talking about two thirds and now you're talking about hundred percent of your body weight split squats. Give give us the runway of somebody, a timetable, what somebody should expect to evolve and grow into being a freak athlete and, and, and to start to go through the the, the the standards to freaky athleticism standards. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we all start somewhere, so it's still going to be relative. So uh, some of the athletes we train, like, like Marcus, if he even shows up for a few <laughs> workouts, you know he's going to be like, his head's going to be at the rim. Yeah, it's so everyone starts somewhere. So what's freaky for one person, you know, these things vary where we're starting from. Yeah. Now, if you remember back to like when you first started bench pressing, you kind of have what's called newbie gains because yeah. you're tapping into areas you've never trained before. Yeah. So your body makes a big jump quickly. No different than if you had never shot a basketball and now you have a coach teaching you, you would make progress quickly. But it's not like you just go straight from missing nine out of 10 shots to making 10 out of 10 every time. Yeah. So what I think is interesting is that People see those quick results when they start doing it because they're training new areas. So you have a bunch of untapped potential. But what I think it's really interesting is when you realize that if you don't try to get fancier, but if you actually keep just trying to master these basics at higher levels, that's where you see four, five, 10 years later that your progress compared to other people who are still going in circles, that's where it gets crazy. Mm. You don't become a world-class power lifter with your bench press in one to two years. These guys have been doing it 10, 20 years. And most of us have been benching 10, 20 years, squatting 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So now what happens if you then do the opposite of that as well for 10, 20 years? So mm -hmm. I'm just starting to see what can happen. I'm seeing that I'm 
I'm still going beyond. Like, like I haven't stopped yet because really, even for me, I'm still a newbie at the ATG system. So even though I've done the ATG system more than anyone, you've probably done it second most of anyone, all these things. We still spent way more time training not according to common That's sense true. and That's making true. all kinds of scientific mistakes in our training so compared true. to now. So and and we have all those problems from our past. Mm. So I just think it's cool that even with you know decades of mistraining and neglected weak links and <laughs> stiffnesses and injuries, I just think it's cool I can go out there on the weekend and throw down dunks like I'm a genetic freak or something. Yeah. To me that's cool. It's unbelievable. Um so it's I'm not I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm just enjoying the process, enjoying living differently than I thought I could. And ultimately at the end of the day, my kids matter way more to me than fitness. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that I can have more of an active life. I was seeing something that Dirk Nowitzki was saying that he regrets playing the last couple of years because now he can't play with his kids. Wow. I sent him a DM. I don't know if he's seen it, but um, was it I told him I could help him get where he could at least play with his kid. Like he mm. can't play with his kids. So to me, that's more important than anything I'll do in my career. So to me, every workout is a gift that's going to allow me to be a more active dad like you are. Derek's lived it. He's able to be the kind of dad that I want to be, to be able to be physically active in my kid's life. So Derek's my training partner motivates me more than anyone because he has the okay. results that I want to achieve. So that's yeah. that's my closing statement. Yeah, we got yeah. that's unbelievable. Three and a half minutes left. Okay, damn. <laughs> that went quick, man. But listen, I uh, I appreciate you sharing that. And and all I can say is is you're right. You know, this is this is still new in the market. This is we still you still on the cutting edge of creation, man. And so these th these numbers are um I new in the marketplace, you know, and it's so important that um to get this information out. And like I said, I hope all these podcasts and, and uh YouTubes go viral because it's, it's information is so important. It may not be the flashiest, but it's the it's the, the information that, that you sharing with people are is just it's key. You know, I wish I'd have had it when I was 19, 20, 21, 22. So uh so yeah, man, take heed to that and um uh, yeah, and, and and get to those numbers, man, especially those low cable uh yeah. reverse squat numbers. Yeah, a company called Chic used to make these. They we couldn't find them anymore, nor are we trying to create a monopoly in the marketplace. This is 100% Derek's product. It's a family business. His kids are working with him on it. These are reverse squat straps. They save you a ton of money. Get going on. You can go to reverse squat.com. Derek and I have a book together in which we cover this stuff with a really good starting formula for longevity. Yeah. You can start working on exactly what we're talking about and a lot more for the whole body. And then I do have a, a zero version of that, as I've said. So it's like, this is not what I'm thinking you should do forever, but it's cool to have stuff you can do with literally nothing. Yeah, literally nothing. Yep. And then the ATG program that, that we train five days a week, that's atgonlinecoaching.com. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching your messages every week. Make my day. You know, there's you get some weirdos out there. So I usually, <laughs> sometimes you guys send such a good message. I'm like, this is incredible. Makes my day. Close computer. Go to sleep oh, on you, a high man. note. So yeah. thanks for the high we notes. We appreciate that, man. <laughs> Much love to y'all, man. Drew, Forrest, they put it together. Thank you, guys. Yeah. See you next time. Holla.